Matt, I got to ask you, Matt. I, 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 good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I got to ask you, you see this number on the screen, 40 slash 20 slash 10. That is what the fucking Joker stat line is going to be against fucking Bam Abigail, who's so fucking shitty that a Joker's going to average a goddamn triple-double at an all-time rate because at least Boston could score with you, I thought. And now we're gonna see a we're gonna see. I thought Boston would have been a much better final. I don't know what you think, but before you get into that, Matt, did you hear our discussion? Charlemagne the God comes out and says Steph is now number two behind Michael Jordan, above Kobe, above LeBron. And I, I'm like, how the fuck are you gonna skip him above all these people? Get the fuck out of here. Steph's a good point guard, but this is not his era, and he's not. Oh, better. I think it's his era though. I don't know if it's his era. I think if you ask anybody <clears throat> if, that's not in our generation, that's, that's that's in D's generation or or younger, they're gonna say LeBron. Um, it's LeBron's era. Even though Steph's got four rings, he you know LeBron is looked at as the figurehead. Steph is looked at like he needed KD's help, and he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. That's he my didn't. point. That's my point. He got two rings without him. Let's, let's, let's throw that out there. I'm just saying he he didn't need his help, but he also did need his help. Everybody needs help. That's that's kind of a, a, a ridiculous argument. This argument like Michael did it all by himself is also ridiculous. So everybody needs help in good teams. Dominique Wilkins could have been the best player of all time if he had some fucking help. So, you know, it's it's just a it's just a matter of where you land, who they surround you with. And then the longevity and also coaching. I mean, Mike didn't win anything until he got the Zen Master. Kobe didn't win anything until he got the Zen Master. Shaq didn't win anything until he got the Zen Master. I mean, the, the one consistent here is him. So, triangle bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Before, before Smitty asks you this, I got to ask you this right away. Um, this commander's losing their trademark request. Thank God. Um, I got to ask you this. This broke news last week. They already have a pending application. And then yesterday, this broke. They lost the trademark request. So yeah. I'm not I'm not sure, Matt. Is that, does that mean that they now have to rename the commanders again? Yes, pretty much. And good, because it's the worst name I've ever heard in my life. Um, look, man, I, the Redskins probably needed to go, all right? But... It is what it is. I'm not. I, I'm not going to sit here and have that debate. I thought it was an iconic logo and team, but I'm also a white dude, so I don't really have an opinion on this. Hey, but Matt, Steve Kim and I broke this down before. There is there is no Navajo little fucking Indian sitting on the White House front lawn bitching about the name. I get it. I understand. And the majority it's a of bunch of white liberals who I bitched know. about the name change. I know, and they're the worst. And I don't want to deal with them, so fuck them. Um, I I think that they should rename the team the Red Tails and pay pay homage to the Tuskegee Airmen and actually do something that is relevant rather than just coming up with the easiest fucking name possible. And you know what? A W. That's a W and the Commanders done, done, yeah, no done. Shit. You know, so it's just it. It's just a shit franchise in the, in the first place because of what Daniel Schneider did to it. But before he got there, they were pretty good. No doubt. They were really That's good. That's true. Nah, really That's good. true, man. Now, going back, I know, you know, uh, Coach started off talking about your your nuggets and what the Joker's going to do to Bam. Look at, at game seven yesterday, man. Seeing that he pulled off an impressive win. Do you have any concern at all? about the Miami Heat? Are, are you coming into the city with nothing but full confidence? Look, they may get one game. That's but they're it. Not, they're not winning in Denver on Thursday night. Denver will run them out of the fucking building Thursday night. Um, although Miami has won every game, one on the road, they're not doing it in Denver. Denver hasn't lost on the road in the playoffs. Um, I'm going to game one with my boys, so I'm pretty excited about it. Tickets were super expensive, but I don't give a shit. Um, and then game two, I'll be going to cover on Saturday night because, you know, I work for Altitude. So it's uh, – I think that this series is 
it has the potential to be an upset. I mean, Miami's beat everybody that they weren't supposed to consistently through the through the playoffs. So I'm not saying they can't do it. But from a matchup perspective, I mean, Joker is going to eat Bam alive. Udonis Haslam isn't going to come off the bench and do anything. I mean, what are we talking about? Unless Jimmy Butler goes nuclear for 80 points a game, bro. And like the Caleb Martin kid is nice. It's a good story. He's going to get paid this year. They got some dudes. I'm not saying they don't. But undrafted, like the undrafted Miami Heat and Jimmy Butler are not going to beat the two-time MVP and a guy who's playing that well with a healthy Murray, with a healthy Porter, you know, with KCP shooting the lights out and Bruce Brown coming off the bench. Like I would I wouldn't be surprised if it's a sweep. Mm, I hear you though, but listen, Tyler Hero's coming back. They say during this series, who was a key player for the Heat. I can see Jimmy yeah. Butler guard Jamal Murray and slowing yeah. him down. Like there's some factors here. This ain't the Celtics, and it's not Al Horford. And they would have swept the Celtics. This, look, the Celtics have a really good player in Jason Tatum who is, I don't, he, he's like the guard version of Anthony Davis to me. Um, me too. I, he, he drives me crazy. He could be so good, but then he just fades away and gets a little ankle tweak, and that's the reason he didn't play well. And, oh, poor you. Um, I, I think that the, the, the Eastern Conference, when Milwaukee got knocked out, I was like, we're good. Giannis got hurt. We're good. Well, we don't have to worry about the Bucs anymore because that, that's the team where I think Giannis can just take over and they got shooters around him. And I think next year that will be the finals, Denver, Milwaukee. So, oh. I, look, I, I Miami's a good story, bro, and it's just recency bias if anybody's going to pick them. But if anybody in the national media actually has the audacity to come out still and be like, the Heat are going to beat the Nuggets. You're just a fucking moron. And if it happens, I'll eat, I'll eat crow. But, I mean, come on, dog. Where? Hey, man, I got to ask you, no, though. No, um... Well, hold on. Let me finish. In a one-off, yeah, I, Miami might be able to pull off a game in a one-off. But in a seven-game series where Denver has home court, we're not going to Boston on Thursday. Miami's coming to Denver. And I just – I just don't see how the the Nuggets can play as bad as they need to play in order for Miami to win. Here's my take. Spo, the head coach, Spolstra, in my opinion, uh, is a big factor. Now, Mm -hmm. I want to see Malone prove to me that at least he coached in a bigger type of series in the Lakers series, even though the Lakers just shit on themselves and that game was – that series was dominated. I thought – I think Spolstra will be a – very, very key factor in this because Malone has been known to be out coached in critical games. Right. And I want to know if yeah. I, I just right. want to know if Miami has yeah, enough me, firepower. Tell me when specifically he's being out coached in critical games. Every year that he's been the head coach. What that's do you fucking mean? What do you fucking mean? Tell me they haven't won nothing. Bro, that's the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard. And you sound that like the dumbest shit, man. How many rings y'all got, homie? All right, bro. So was he out coached in the bubble when they came back from three one twice and then yes. lost in the Western Conference Finals? That's bullshit. He wasn't out. How was he not? He wasn't out coached. He coached his ass off. They came back from three one twice. That's pretty good coaching. And then lost in the Western Conference Finals to the eventual champs. And then he we lost. Need more excuses for excuses around this motherfucker than I've ever heard in my life. Reasons, this motherfucker though. has no result, homie. He hasn't won shit. Fucking, hey, hey, motherfucker, you want to let me talk? Or he hasn't won though. No. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. I got it. What, what else you gonna tell me? There's reasons, and there's excuses, and excuses are what Laker fans are coming up with right now. Reasons are what I'm giving you. So let me speak. I agree to that. Then he lost Porter and Murray, his two best players beside Jokic, just for Nikola to go back to back MVPs and almost average triple double. That was pretty good coaching, and get back into the playoffs, win a series one year get beat, lose a series, get swept the other year with Jokic as the MVP. That sucked. But the Suns didn't make it to the finals. So I'm going to sit here and say, okay, so Mike Malone or Michael Malone is being outcoached. They've been the one seed since December. He's done nothing but make the right calls. They, they have home court advantage for the playoffs, and they're about to hoist a trophy. And you're telling me he's going to get outcoached because Eric Spolster – one rings with LeBron, D Wade, and Chris Bosch. He ain't never won shit without superstars. You can get there, but it ain't winning. So 
so I, I'll throw it back to you. If Michael Malone was the head coach of the Heat instead of Eric, Eric Spolter, he'd have two fucking rings and maybe three. Maybe he would have gotten LeBron to play hard in the Mavericks series instead of shit all over himself. So let's just sit here and not act like you can have that com- that conversation is relevant right now because they haven't been in enough huge opportunities to make that fucking comment. But you got to win first before I can yes. say if he okay. had this, if it was so a fit. You already owe me $100 from the Lakers series. Do you want to double down on this one and lose $200? No, because I'm not a believer in this Miami Heat team. I'm not a fucking believer in this goddamn... I'm wearing pink, homie. I'm fucking wearing pink because I lost last night because fucking Tatum pussy ass fucked me. Well, that, you should have known that was coming. I told everybody at noon that Miami was going to win. I called it too, man. JB didn't believe me, and that's why he's sitting here with the with look like the Pink Panther right now. I mean, what I'm going to say is real quick is the one thing... Because listen, I, I'm going with the Nuggets as well. Is that salmon or pink? Man, let the chat. We got that debate right now out there. We don't know. This is the pinkest shirt I could find last night, last minute at fucking your, Burlington, okay? Your days of finger banging Mary Jane Rotten Crops through her pretty pink panties are over. <laughs> <laughs> JB, you, you, he, he hates it, man. He hates it. Master, you know more movie quotes than anyone I fucking know. Yeah, I got a lot of free time. <laughs> I love it, man. But what I was going to say is, we, we are all in agreement that we believe the Nuggets is obviously the better team. But the Miami Heat has been shocking us the entire playoff. No one thought they were going to beat the Bucs. Giannis was out for two games, but he came back, and they still lost. They they beat the Celtics. They beat the like, – at, like, at some point, we got to start believing in the Heat. I know they were in the AC, but they're in the finals now, so fuck how the regular season went. They're here now. Believe in them. Take them. <laughs> I don't believe in them. I'm just saying. So all this fucking hype and talk is bullshit. Take them. You and you. Take the fucking heat right now. I ain't taking shit. I might not even watch a game of this motherfucker. I have no interest. Why you wouldn't watch a game? You're going to watch Jokic chop up out of Bayou. Jimmy Buckets will go off. He'll he'll probably get a game. And Denver will win in five at home. And we're going to have a fucking party. And shit, if they win, I have to cover myself in fucking green jello. So I I should be rooting for the heat. Hold on, what? Hold on, explain that. I think I hopped on a little too late. No, this is this is a long time ago, a, a bet that was made on air uh, against the national writer. I can't remember who it was, so maybe I don't have to do it. But I was like, if the, you know, if the Nuggets win, I'll you know, he, you know, I'll, I'll bet you this or whatever. And I was like, yeah, when they win, I'll cover myself in green jello. And now they're in the finals, so fuck. Oh shit, we gotta see that, man. Please post that out. Hey, now, now I'm rooting for the Nuggets more than ever. I gotta see Madison Green Jello. I'm gonna go get both your girlfriends to cover me. <laughs> hey, LBC Rob, he ain't been sending me messages and shit. You bet on Boston, homeboy. You from LA. Motherfucker, I bet a thousand dollars. Scared money don't make no money, motherfucker. What are you talking about, homie? Who are you gonna bet on? Motherfuckers always love to talk without doing shit. Motherfucker, I, I... bet on something then, homie. What are you talking about? Hey, hey, Matt. Hey, Matt, I got to ask you something, man. When everybody fucking yapping and all this talking shit, you from L.A., don't bet on Boston. Motherfucker, what does money have to do with where you're from? I'm confused. (laughs) Look, look, I I bet on damn near everything. So (laughs) I bet bet on last night and won, and it was nice. I I lost. I'm a fucking degenerate. I'm a fucking degenerate. To win, so... Hey Matt, before you get out of here today, I got We got to do a. We're gonna play a game with you today. Me and Darnell, Darnell and I, a grammatically correct person that I am, with the education, education that I have. I, we're gonna. Hey Darnell, let's play hell yeah, hell no with Big Matt right now. Big Matt, let's do it. Let's do it. Hey hell yeah, or hell no, Matt. Jimmy Butler outplays Joker in the NBA Finals. Hell yeah, hell no. Hell no. Not even not a shot. It's an it's easy conversation. No. Mm, okay, I got one. Let me go next real quick. Let me go next. The Celtics lost the series, but they were still the better team. Hell yeah or hell no? Hell no. Should have won. Yeah, game seven at home. You're not the better team. I agree to that. You choke artist ass fucking. I, hey, did you hear the head coach before? So many say, opportunities. Did you hear the head coach before the game give it a speech? That was the worst speech I've ever heard. You want to talk about being out coached? That fucking dude got told, got circles ran around his ass. Hey Matt, but just smile. 
Yeah, That's still fun. win games. Everyone have fun. Have fun. Yeah. That'll see me at my legacy. Let's no, smile. Have fun. Dog. Have fun hey, hey, JB, if you can find a video, can you play that motherfucker again? Because the more I think about it, the more funny it is. Like he said, just smile. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable, dog. I, I, I've never seen no shit like it in my life. Hey Matt, and then, and then he tries to like gang bang on him. You better fucking smile. <laughs> <laughs> you better fucking smile. I'll tell you, if you don't fucking smile, oh, I'm gonna put my foot over your ass. <laughs> this is the I've ever heard in my fucking life, ever. Man, I don't get it. I I've, been, get I've it. been around Dan Hawkins at practice when he said, "Look at the flat iron. How beautiful is that?" I was on the sideline, like, "What the fuck is this dude talking about?" But the flat irons have been there for a long time. I, look, man, I, this is the this is where coaching is going. This is what happens when you hire a thirty-three year old kid to get his first coaching job with the Boston fucking Celtics. If they would have had Nick Nurse or Frank Vogel or anybody that's an adult. They probably would have won game seven or even closed it a lot faster than they did. Look, I'm not saying the kid can't coach. He obviously got his team to the Eastern Conference Finals, but this kind of shit screams player talk to me. Like, he thinks he's one of the guys and he's giving a player talk. You're the head coach. You're not giving a talk. You're telling them what's about to happen. You're not asking them to have fun. What the fuck are we talking about? Like, uh, we're going to fucking like recess to play on the court and like everybody have a good time. This is the game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals at the Garden. And I know it's not the old Garden, but it's still the fucking Garden. It's still on hollow grounds. Like this is, it's Lakers, Celtics, Warriors, and every fucking buddy else. And the Heat are one of the everybody else's. And they've got, they've got a bunch of rings, but they're still, it, they're not at 17 and 16 yet. So, I just I thought it was a bad look and it's it's look it's this new era where everybody on Twitter and TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and everyone in the comments is the baddest motherfucker ever and everyone's super tough and all the telephone tough guys out there that can type really fast or talk shit they're the toughest people on earth and now this dude who's not the most of intimidating. He's not going to demand a room where everybody's going to be like, holy shit, coach is talking. I guarantee you there were dudes in the back off camera or even on that were rolling their eyes and like exhaling like this motherfucker. Guaranteed, because that's the way dudes are. They can look, they can see through this shit in a fucking second. I, it's like <clears throat> that speech reminded me of when I was a uh, in my sixth year and we drafted Tim Tebow and a week into the fucking a week into the off season, he was like trying to do prayer meetings and get a bunch of adult men to come like hang out and do his shit. We were like, this ain't Florida motherfucker. What are you talking about? Do your job. Like, you know, save your speech bullshit. I don't need to get in a, in a circle and hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Like we're in Gainesville, we're in Denver, you know? So in a profession, you shouldn't need to be motivated like this. I need to be game planned. I need to know how we're going to stop Jimmy Butler Caleb Martin scoring like a fucking like a like a, a hose that hasn't been turned off in three games. How are we going to cover him? You know, like I, I didn't see any any like one, one thing I saw in Miami last night is the full court pressure on defense. They went from from match zone to one on one back to back to back to back possessions, and Boston couldn't figure it out because Tatum is a mental cripple. Jalen Brown is just fucking shooting three pointers. What they go eight for fifty yesterday. I mean, maybe we could run some offense and then just stop hucking up shots. That's the thing about this generation that I can't get behind. Like, I don't understand why getting an easy two is worse than a hard three. Like, I, I, don't, know, I don't know how many times I watch guys go up the court and I'm like, one extra pass, dunk. And he'll throw it out to the fucking corner and miss a three and starts another fast break the other way. It's one of the reasons I love watching the Nuggets as much as I do, and I'm so glad they're in my hometown, is they take the easy two. Nikola doesn't do that shit. He'll make the extra pass. Yeah, he has 10 assists a game, but he's also a freak. He's not, he's not like everyone else. But he also 
heat lives in the paint, bro. He's going to eat the fucking heat alive in the paint. So I know why, Matt. We're, we're in an instant gratification era. These motherfuckers need it now. They want a three because Steph shoots 57 footers all day. But this started with Steph. It was it didn't happen before Steph. People were shooting threes. They were shooting threes, but they weren't shooting threes like this. No, I know. I mean, there's maybe there's maybe two guys. I take that back. There's five guys off the top of my head that are guards. That I'm like, okay, that's probably good when he shoots it. And that Steph, Lillard, Murray, Devin Booker. <sighs> Shit. Clay, Clay when he's hot. Yeah, but he's more, he's a small forward. I, I don't, he, I know he plays shooting guard for them, but I, I mean, Clay's, Clay, a shoot, I need a shooting guard to also defend, and he ain't covering shit. I mean, he, fuck, give me a break. He used he, to before the he, knee. He used to with them knee injuries, yeah. He, he ain't no more. So, hey, man, hell yeah, hell no, nah, Matt. Um, Caleb Martin is the Miami Heat MVP. Yes, he is. Me, it's thank tough. you. Hell yes, he is. It if is without tough. Caleb Martin, the Miami Heat do not advance. And I don't know why fucking Butler got the MVP. He didn't do shit in that series. Well, that's also not that's true. False. He also he balled the fuck out in all but one game. The game six, he played really poorly. He still had 20. But look, Butler won it because he's the name. But Caleb Martin is the reason they won the series. And they, look, you want to go down in fucking lore? Then go beat the number one seed and Caleb Martin and Jimmy Butler become the new one, two punch in Miami. And they give Caleb Martin a $150 million max contract. And he rides off into the sunset all the way to Tootsie's. <laughs> My thing is real quick. I know Caleb Martin bought out, but I don't have a problem with Jimmy Butler winning it because again, I said it the other day, Jimmy Butler is the star player on that team, which means he's going to get the full focus and attention of the opponent. What that does is that frees up the others, as Shaq likes to call them, the Caleb Martins, the Vences, things like that. And you're supposed to knock down shots and make those plays, which he did at a high level. But again, you look at the stat line for, for, for Jimmy during his playoffs, and, and Matt just hit the nail right on the head. He had one bad game where he had, I think, what, uh, uh, what, 14 points or whatever. The rest of the series at 35, 27. He had one game when he got 16, but that's because he set out because they were beating the Boston Southern's ass. Got 29, and then the closeout just now, he got 24, I think 11 and 8. So it's not like Gene Butler was out here chopped liver. It's like this guy balled out too. And, and, and to me, I don't know if the award is based upon just the one series or is, a, is upon the entire journey, but you got to give it to Jimmy. Now we're just talking about this series. Well, look, look. This, this, I know Butler's their team MVP. I'm talking about this series. Once the, even in the series, I just read you the stat line. He's been, he balled out this series. Like, I think we're, we're I don't. All right, now, 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 read me Caleb Martin's lines. Let me find it, man. Let me let, let me look it up for you, man. Go ahead, Matt. Look, look, this this series that's coming up. I know that like the networks are pissed because it's not Boston and Lakers, and everybody that's either in LA or Boston wants to see the same damn thing we've seen a hundred times. But the Lakers and the Celtics shouldn't have been where they got. I mean, Philadelphia is a better team than Boston. They just they have Embiid, and he can't close a fucking cabinet. So, you know. To like, me, man, it's a you problem, and I'm tired of defending you problems. Like, the Lakers lost. That's a fucking you problem. Boston, you lost. It's a you problem. Oh, yeah, well. I get it. I'm trying to make a point. I'm saying no, that. No, I'm really, defending your ass. Yeah. If you're really a an NBA fan and you really love basketball, because if the Celtics and the Lakers were watching the finals, I would watch every minute of every game, even if my Nuggets weren't in it. Because I, I appreciate greatness, and I want to watch LeBron, and I want to see him beat Tatum, and blah, 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 blah. I watched every game last year. I thought it was a good finals, not a great finals, but good. This year has the potential to be a sweep. It could go seven. Miami's got fucking heart. I don't know. I'm just saying that if you can't appreciate a team that's so well coached, like Eric Spolstra's, that doesn't have a lot of superstar power, and but has a guy like Jimmy Butler who changes in the playoffs, Upstart like Caleb Martin and Vincent and all these other cats. And then on the other side, you've got an up and coming potential dynasty that has to get their first ring in order to gain the respect they need to build that. So you've got a coach on one side that's got multiple rings, but with unbelievably talented players, but has visits to the finals without them, which tells me that he's pretty fucking good at his job. 
But in this game, man, when's the last time you've seen an upset in a seven-game series? Like a legitimate, like, oh, my God, I can't believe, like in the finals. When's the last time you saw somebody in the finals, like the Lakers and the Sixers in, o, in 01 or 2000, whatever that was? It, it was 01, right? They had beat the Nets in 2000. They got the Sixers. In yeah, the Iverson won game one. The Lakers went 15 and one in the whole damn playoffs. I mean, that's that the that Sixers team reminds me of this Heat team. You know, big guy in the middle, Bam's better offensively than Dikembe was. But then, uh, you know, a bunch of role players around. Eric, Eric Snow, and they had a bunch of shooters yeah. around Iverson. They got, you know, they got dudes around Iverson. And if Iverson has a bad night, we're fucked. So Caleb Martin can pull some of the of the strain away here and help offensively. But this is the thing, guys. They're going from a seven-game just balls to the wall series against Boston, straight onto a plane, straight to Denver to play Thursday night. They got here this morning. Okay. So they'll have a day and a half to acclimate and get the soreness out of their body at a mile high. And then they have to chase around Michael Porter Jr. and KCP and Murray and Jokic, by the way, who's going to be sprinting up and down the fucking court like a goddamn, you know, like, like a Serbian tank. <laughs> so it's, look, man, I just, they're going to be exp expunging so much effort on defense, chasing everybody around in Denver. They go back to Miami 2-0. It's fucking – they cook them, dude. I mean, you might be able to get one in South Beach, but look, this is what I'll say, and then I got to get out of here. I got I to run this morning. I'm pretty busy. Um, the – when you look at championships, okay, <clears throat> the Broncos won their first – or excuse me. Yeah, ne never mind. Never mind. I, I, every, but every title, CU won their first title in Miami. Uh, the Avalanche won their first title against the Florida Panthers in Miami, who are back in the Stanley Cup. Mm. And the Broncos won their last title in Miami against the Falcons. So there's a tie-in with Denver and Miami here. And now the Nuggets are playing the Heat in the finals. So I'm just... I'm, the writing's on the wall, bro. If you if you're look, if you're gonna take the the heat in this series, you obviously have been watching the Lakers. Or hey, before you as you get out of here, um, more impressive to you. What what would excite you more and get your little dick hard? The Colorado oh. Buffs winning ten games this year, or the fucking Nuggets winning it all? Oh, games. Huh? See you. I, I know. I already know. I didn't have to fucking ask that question. I love the Nuggets, but I I am a Buffalo, so <laughs> my there's job. A huge, there's a huge difference between being a fan of something and being something. Like once you do that, you can't undo it. So if no I doubt. if I played power forward for the Nuggets for six years or five years or whatever, I'd probably say the Nuggets, but I didn't. <laughs> this is not Antonio McDice over here, so. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. Buffs. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Jets. Like, I, I would rather the Jets win the Super Bowl. And I'm in Denver. I'd be running around by myself, going fucking nuts. Interesting. Hey, man, I know you gotta get out of here. I appreciate you. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you uh, later on this week. All right, boys, go nugs. <laughs>